So hi, everyone. Um, this is Krista Brown, founder of the Free Soil Arts Collective. Um, and we are joined today by Henry Marte, who is going to be our November feature for the Vital Voices series. Um, this is a six month long series where each month from September to February, we're highlighting an artist of color in the area. Um, and we're very appreciative to Enterprise Bank for being the presenting sponsor for this series. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, our other supporters to date, we have Studio 26 Associates, BRM Production Management, and Nyende Thurman. Um, Nyende is actually the episode sponsor for today's episode. So we are very grateful to her for her support of Free Soil and for, um, for this chat today. So in the interest of time, we're going to get started. So let me just press my fancy buttons. <laughs> let us see. Okay, let's see, let's see. Okay, so Henry, if you can share your video now, that would be great. And I think we'd be ready. Hey, hold on, let me see if I get this right. <laughs> oh, apparently you disabled attendees uh, screen oh, share. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay, let me see. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, okay. Oh, yay, okay. Welcome, Henry. How are you doing? Hey, how's it going? Good. Good. Um, so um, for those of us who are in the chat who are here, we have around 10 folks and growing. Can you share a little bit about who you are and what you do? So my name is Henry Marte, um, based in Lowell. I'm a photographer. Sorry, looks like we're, there you go. I'm a photographer, filmmaker, and I dabble a bit of graphic design as well. I have a studio here in Lowell, but we're getting some sort of echo. I don't know if you hear that. All right, so I have a studio here in Lowell called Marte Media, um, originally from New York City. And uh, I dabble in all sorts of different types of photography and filmmaking projects, and I'm excited to be here. Yes, we're excited to have you. Um, so your story about coming to Lowell was really interesting to me. Can you tell um, some of us who think, oh, Henry's just been in Lowell his whole life. Can you talk to us about how you came here? <laughs> so it's funny enough, I just uh, hit seven years. Uh, it was like last month or a couple months ago. So I had, uh, I was living in New Jersey and my, my lease was up. My, um, my civilian job, our last contract in the state had ran out. I got offered to transfer to New York City, which where is where I'm originally from. And uh, I had just been discharged from the National Guard earlier in the year. So like, oh, you know what? It might be time, it might be a good time to start somewhere fresh and new. And I have siblings that live here in Lowell with my dad and they're much younger. So I've never really lived with them or anywhere near them. So I thought, oh, be still here seven years later. Wow, wow. Um, so how did you first get into filmmaking and, and photography? When do you think you first um, saw like, wow, I can take pictures and I can, you know, tell a story? But I've been dabbling around with a, a camera in art since I was a kid. And uh, even as a child, I always had like a disposable film camera because I couldn't afford a real camera. And I would just constantly take photos and like, drop it off to get developed and wait like a week for it to get back to me. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> then at one point or another, I, I guess I kind of stopped and decided to try to grow up like, I, like you're constantly told. <laughs> and then uh, maybe like six years ago, I, six, seven years ago, I picked up my first entry level DSLR and kind of slowly fell back in love with it because it was a gift actually for my dad. So I started learning more and then I was shooting an auto and I'm like, all right, I'm going to conquer manual. So I just kept on like watching different classes and online and playing with the camera more and like making a lot of mistakes along the way. Yeah. And I one then I remember one year it was starting to get cold outside. I'm like, you know, I want to learn more about like photography. And I had no experience in shooting in a studio. And I discovered Western Avenue studios by accident because uh, I was looking for a fun date idea for uh, to go with the person, like, person I was seeing with, uh, the, sorry, at the time, 
And uh, both her and I were into art. So we're like, you know what? This looks like fun. So it was one of the open studios and I saw they had studios available and they were fairly affordable. Mm. And like two months later, a month later, I inquired about the studio because I'm like, you know what? I can learn more and being around the atmosphere could be very beneficial for my artwork and just developing as an artist. So I ended up renting my first little tiny studio. It was like 221 a month. It was like 250 square feet. But yeah. it was my studio. I remember like fixing it up and being all excited about it and, and slowly like trying to figure out like, all right, what do I learn next? What do I do next? Mm. Wow. So family in a date night or what brought you here? <laughs> well, family brought me to Lowell. Yeah. Uh, a date idea kind of brought me to Western Avenue. <laughs> I love that. I feel like a lot of times, like, um, for those of us out here who live in Lowell, like everyone who you see, you just assume they've been here their whole lives. And um, really cool how you came this way, Henry. Um, so you how can would... blame my siblings. <laughs> <laughs> and can you talk to us a little bit about, um, so you do filmmaking, you do photography. Can you kind of talk about your journey to creating your own um, media company and what that has been like? It's definitely been an experience, especially this year. <laughs> so along the way, as I was developing my craft and I had my studio, I was learning more and more and people slowly started offering me money to take their photo or do like little fun videos for them. Mm. So I was like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. <laughs> and I was always the, the person that was always posting photos and sharing photos. But the one bad thing about that is like, sometimes I will go with friends and we'll do like an event together and I'll bring my camera and I'll post it on my personal profile. And I would get all sorts of like a random friend request from people who happen to be there or friends of friends. And I'm like, yeah, this is a little too much. So I created like a business page to kind of separate the two. Mm. And I started, that's how I first started my business page on Facebook actually. Oh, wow. So even, even though it was a business page, I wasn't really treating it like business, more like a separation of my photography and my personal profile mm, okay and then as I developed them more and more um I was like oh I can actually make money doing this and I enjoy this and have a passion so I started taking out more clients I started shooting obstacle course events as well and random headshots and like slowly I just build it more and more mm. and uh this year's supposed to have been the biggest year but it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Can you I, talk to us a little bit about that with, um, I know the work that you did with Spartan Race and how that kind of helped you figure out what you want to do. So I, for, I've been, I worked for Spartan Race for over five years in their production. And I also used to kind of freelance via their uh, third party contractor that, that did their photography. So like that was like the one of the first major events where I got a chance to like photograph and and work in production with them. I got an opportunity to travel over the country. Like uh, before I left them, I used to average at least one or two flights a, a month, actually. Wow. Wow. Like my current apartment, I moved here. It was my lease started last Oct October a year ago but I got the keys a week beforehand because October 1st, I was heading the road for like a week, came mm -hmm. back home, hit the road for another week. And then my second month at my new apartment, I spent three and a half weeks of that on the road somewhere. Wow. Between like, I was in, down in Family Park for a week, then I was in Chicago for another week and in San Francisco for a week and a half. So it kind of exposed me to a lot of different cultures around the country, which definitely grateful for and, mm. and learn about tons of great food. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I remember when we chatted, you talked about how um, the traveling kind of took a toll and that's really what kind of prompted you to do more things locally. Is that true? Yes, because uh, like, like I said, it got to a point where I would spend uh, sometimes even the longest streak I had was 28 days on the road. Wow. And then back in August of uh, last year, I spent over a month actually on the road because I was in Los Angeles for a week and a half and then another two and a half weeks in Hawaii for work assignment. And as glamorous as it sounds, it does get a bit old, and especially like waking up in different uh, hotels or Airbnbs or constantly traveling and dealing with jet lag. Mm -hmm. One of the running jokes that I make 
is that there was a period of time where I was in Logan so much that I started recognizing some of the TSA agents. <laughs> I, w- I once asked them uh, how much for timeshare there, and they did not find it that humorous. Oh, no. <laughs> I have a fear of flying, so that type of life is like, whoo, when I think about it. Um, wow. So um, if you're ready, Henry, I think we'd love to see um, some of your work, if you can share with us um, any photos that speak to you, any projects you've been a part of that um, can be shown virtually. <laughs> sure. Uh, hold on a second. So I kind of threw some stuff last minute on there. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can go through some photos real quick. Sure. Oh, uh, says that you have this. I can't share oh, my I'm screen. So sorry, Henry. I'm just rude. That's just all. rude. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> uh, okay, I think you should be good now. I think I did it right. Yeah. So I'll start with my um, black and white project that a lot of people recognize. Sure. Mm -hmm. Can you see that better? Yeah, that's perfect. So the whole black and white uh, photographic guest book started out as a like it's kind of by accident because yeah. I had just a uh, guy on a larger studio uh, from Western Avenue. So I was like fixing up painting because, you know, you want to make your space feel like you. Yeah. And so, and one of the older artists in the building was like, oh, you should get a guest book for your studio. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, oh, you know, a book where people can who visit could come by and sign it. I'm like, I'm like, thanks. That's not really me. Yeah. <laughs> And another artist chimed in and was like, no, you should really do that. I'm like, why? <laughs> They're like, oh, so you can see who visited and it'll be fun. I'm like, but I'm only the one who's really going to see it unless somebody's standing by it and looking at it. Mm. So I came up with a fun little idea where maybe instead of getting a, an actual book, I would just go ahead and take portraits of my visitors. And I went ahead and created a couple and then I started editing it because I kind of wanted because guest books in general are very like traditional and like kind of like older sort of things. I went with black and white to signify that. Mm, Yeah. So here are a few of them. So uh, these are actually to my pseudo neighbors there. They have a pseudo down the hall, two stylish sisters. And the day of this, they were celebrating their anniversary in their studio. So I'm like, perfect. Wow. Let's see if it lets me. Huh. Apparently, it doesn't let me do multiple like that. It's oh, okay. so weird. Hold on, open preview. Still, doesn't let me do that. Now, you see, sharing my screen, so I'll just share this way. Okay, sure. Wow. See, and then this is another studio neighbor and loft neighbors, actually. So they have a studio down the hall for me as well. And I'm like, hey, it'd be great if you guys signed the guest books. They came check out the new studio. Mm. And I just love like the emotion and the image that's captured with the two of them. I love it. And this is actually a good buddy of mine that used to have a studio. Uh, he, he's currently serving at the Navy and mm. he came by. He's like, hey, I need to sign your guest book. He's like, it's badass. I want to be a part of it. <laughs> Wow. And this is another one of my studio neighbors, uh, Queen Andaline down the hall. Yeah. And this good old, um, this is one of the owners from Navigation Brewing Company. He jokes around that he doesn't photograph well. <laughs> and after I, I took this, he's like, man, do I really look that old? <laughs> oh, wow, these are amazing. Thank you. And one of the cool things that came that has come out of this project is that people have seen it and they want it. They've 
actually hired me to do something similar for them, like uh, Project Learn. I recently did a portrait project for their graduating high school students. Mm. So these are some of them. Mm. Wow. Can you talk so some a little of, bit about um, that project? So Project Learn um, wanted me to kind of capture like almost get like the same sort of feel from my guest book, but with their um, high school seniors and incoming seniors that have worked with them, mm. kind of like a, so they paired up my photography with messages from them. So if you go to Project Learn's website, you can actually find the messages attached to them. Oh, wow. But they kind of wanted something that could tell a story because a lot of these kids were kind of abruptly cut short for their senior year. Mm. It was definitely a very fun project and it's also kind of interesting talking to the kids because like they're in the middle of their like their final year of high school was like this big memorable year and next thing you know it's just like kind of cut short mm. and how did you arrange these um like safely like during this time what did it take for you to get these pictures taken so funny enough we did them outside of the high school at lucy larkham park i have a pop-up uh, backdrop that you can set up easily mm -hmm. and I use a zoom lens my telephoto lens where I can stand a decent distance apart mm -hmm. like I think this one was taken probably like six or eight feet apart oh wow which means I had to keep my hand uh my hands uh sturdier than usual <laughs> wow and some like the main light is a little pop-up flash that I brought while the fill light is actually just natural light on the street. Wow. And Can the you... cool thing about it, it doesn't even feel like you're outside. No, it doesn't. Wow. Wow. So, cause I, you see a bit of reflection on her glasses where you see like a bit of the street. Oh yeah. <laughs> cool. Let's see. Let's go to another project that actually got a lot of a lot of good traction recently. Sure. So one of the, the cool things about just creating and art in general is There we go. Can you, can you see the image now? Uh, I can, I see like all of them. Um, I don't know how to explain it. I can see like the gallery view of all your pictures. Oh, that's where it just shut off on me. I'm uh, having a little technical difficulty. That's all right. <laughs> you could just demonstrate the ballet. Just kidding. <laughs> there we go. So this was an interesting project because how often do you find a random ballerina in the middle <laughs> of downtown Lowell? Mm. <laughs> but this was just like a random idea I've, I've had uh, envisioned for quite a while and I just kept on pushing it off, like especially because of COVID, like, it's not going to happen. And then it started getting like, all right, you know what? This isn't going away anytime soon. We have to figure out how to do this safely and mm. get it out there. Mm. Wow. And then this was kind of a, a tough one because it was still in the middle of the day. So we just had to almost like when we were kids uh, playing baseball and you see a car coming, somebody yells <laughs> out a car and everyone moves out of the way. <laughs> uh -huh. Wow. And um, Henry, something you said about this project that stuck out to me was, I think on social media, you said it's important to just sometimes create for art's sake. So nobody like commissioned you to do this. You just felt like it's something that you wanted. Yep, absolutely. I, like this was just something I wanted to create. It's an idea I had. And this wasn't a commission. I even uh, I put out on Instagram asking if anybody had any connections with any real ballerinas because mm -hmm. I want it to be as authentic as possible mm. and how often like I don't think 
anybody can fake uh you standing on their toes like that either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and part of the idea was I wanted to do it around different parts of Lowell that people will recognize. Mm. How did you I, um how did you like I don't even know if coaching is the right term, but like how do you work with um the folks that you're shooting? Like do you talk a lot? Do you tell them what to do? I I do talk a lot to them, but I try to avoid telling them what to do to a certain extent because mm-hmm. I don't want it to be overly post or overly coach where when you look at the images, it's obvious that they're being coached. So I kind of want them to feel comfortable and be able to do their own thing. And only if I feel like I need to jump in, I'll go ahead and say something like, hey, maybe do this instead or do that instead. Mm, okay. Like with the ballerina, it was mostly her doing dances and me snapping away. Mm. And this, was that Western Ave, the last one? Yes, that was uh, Western Avenue. That's actually right outside um, the building. Oh, wow. Okay. And I, and I thought that it can be a pretty good comparison because you see like the sheer size of the building and compared mm. to her. Mm. Beautiful. Henry, how did you find uh, the, uh, the model? Mm. I, I put it out on Instagram and a friend of mine actually went to college with a former ballerina. Mm. So she put us in contact and uh, this ballerina still practices and actually teaches. Oh, wow. So like those actual shoes and outfits, those are actually her real outfits that she utilizes. Mm-hmm. we definitely caused quite a bit of like questions and confusion <laughs> walking down the street <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Lowell pull up one of my favorite photos of Lowell oh sure oh wow so this one was uh, I think a few years ago now it was when we had that big snowstorm on a Sunday where um, there's parking ban in effect and almost everyone was closed. Mm. So I came up with the bright idea of wandering around downtown on foot in the middle of a snowstorm. <laughs> <laughs> I only saw two of the people on foot that day. One yeah. guy was cleaning off the steps to City Hall and one guy ran into uh, the Market Street parking deck and two minutes later ran back out to his apartment <laughs> building. <laughs> Wow. But the oh. nice thing about this day, it was just so quiet and peaceful and everything. It just, it was just perfect. It was kind of post-apocalyptic, mm. but it was just extremely peaceful. And you're never going to have another, another opportunity like this. Mm. Are these oh, Henry, folks in the chat love this. Website? Oops, sorry. Yes. So uh, photos like these are available on my website, www marte.media the nice thing about this day it was just so quiet and peaceful and everything it just it was just perfect it was kind of post mm. yeah so all the prints are available on my website there's a link that takes you to a print shop and you can actually order directly online and i'm sorry henry that's um marte.media all right unfortunately i couldn't get martemedia.com <laughs> <laughs> They, they want like two grand for it. Oh no. <laughs> wow. And apart from like taking photos in, in low life, thanks to my uh, job at Spartan Race and just in general, my sense of traveling and adventure, I've taken some pretty cool photos in other random places. Like this was in Hawaii. Oh, wow. I found myself with two days in between assignments and my second assignment was Hawaii. So I figure. Instead of going home, let me go to Hawaii for two days. Wow. So I decided to just go exploring with my camera, and I found what it looked like to be a perfect place for a sunset. Mm. This is in uh, Honolulu uh, Beach. Mm. So as I'm just sitting there watching the sunrise, uh, sunset and taking photos and video clips, this surfer climbs out and looks like he was calling it quits for the day. And he was <laughs> like, just stopped. And like looking away, I'm like, this is a perfect shot. Like it seems like it was planned and some sort of marketing ad, 
but none of this was planned. He was just coming out and calling it quits for the day because it was getting too dark to continue surfing. And I just happened to be there. Wow. Wow. Sometimes you happen to be in the perfect place at the right time. Mm. See you Wow. And you have prints of, of this on your website as well, Henry? Yes, I, I do. All these prints are available on there. And if there's something that you see here and it's not available, feel free to send me an email or contact me through my website and I can get it up on there. Amazing. Here's another cool one that I really enjoyed. This was a personal trip in Iceland. We uh, spent the entire week just traveling around the entire country. A group of friends and I, we rented a van and we crammed in as much as we could. Mm -hmm. And we stayed at a different Airbnb each night. And this was probably like halfway through the trip. One of the biggest things we wanted to see was the glaciers and we got a chance to see them. And the timing was just perfect with the way the sun was setting and hitting uh, the reflection on the, on the water. Mm -hmm. Definitely recommend taking a trip out there if you ever get the opportunity to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if we're ever allowed to travel again. I know. <laughs> and Henry, I don't want to stop the, um, yeah. the photo sharing if you have more, but I'm interested, and I think others might be too, as to how your business has um, been affected by the current pandemic. Are you still able to work? Or are you, um, how are you feeling? So I'm definitely working a lot less due, due to the pandemic because everything's canceled event-wise. But it's been like trying to adjust. Like I already kind of chopped up this year as a loss because one of my largest contracts, it's like Spartan Race shooting their events and other event companies. Hmm. The, run, the running joke is that I stopped counting after $20,000. <laughs> oh, oh, God. And it's funny because like the, was the Winterfest, I went as a spectator and I took a few photos. I didn't realize that that was going to be my, my last event that I was actually going to capture before everything shut down. Wow. So I'll end the photos with the, some photos from that because that was like the last thing, the last actual public event I took photos of this year. Wow. Which is a shame because I was, you know, like we like we all have plans, but mm. it's been a interesting like trying to adapt and like doing shoots outside and do, I've been also photographing products for people because mm. products you don't really have to interact with people because sometimes companies that can either just pick up the items directly or do a drop off where they ship it to me. And then I can photograph it on my own. So that's one of the, the things I've been doing during this as well. Mm. See, wow. Another thing, I've also taken the time during this to focus on projects I've been putting off mm. that help that help my business. Like I updated my website earlier this year, which is which was quite a bit of a task, and I had just pulled it off because no nobody thinks that updating a website is fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very true. And, but one of the big things I really enjoyed, um, like that I did, that I probably wouldn't have done if I was still busy, is that I finally put together a filmmaking reel. It's one of those things I that you're like in filmmaking, you don't really have much of a resume. You can put a resume and put like a list of projects you've worked on, but people want to see examples. So highlight reels tend to be like a video resume of your work. Mm. So actually have it here. Let me see if it lets me play it. Awesome. Let's see. I think I gotta change screens for that. Go. So this is so this is uh my filmmaking reel. So it shows like an example of like my experience filmmaking and my abilities. So I'll just play it. My rec so you might recognize certain scenes from it.
looks like you do a lot with uh, drones. Mm. Yeah, the the drone is one of my favorite cameras. I joke around that it's my lightest camera because it can fly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so like, the, and so it's like it has clips from like a couple years ago as well. It's one of those things I had been putting off and 2020 seemed like the perfect year to kind of like grow deeper instead of wider since we really can't go wider right now mm. where everything shut down. So I'm like, all right, let me put this to work and finally put together this reel. Like, uh, it's like, like some of the clips on there, you see it has uh, people wearing these shirts that say Team Marjorie B. That's a veteran nonprofit that actually sent me to documentary film school a few years ago at Mass Art. Wow. So like they they pay for the, the entire way for me to do this documentary film school wow. how did that happen henry like so um i used to be heavily involved with the organization as a volunteer leader okay. and uh they developed this like leadership development program and i applied and i was one of uh I think it was like 14 people nationwide to get accepted Wow. And each person had like a particular focus and like leadership development. Mine was media based. So for the entire year, they gave me this like educational grant to just take classes and do random projects and experiences. And I even got paired up with their, like their content department and helped them capture content, which yeah. is kind of cool. Cause that's like where the whitewater rafting stuff came from. And some of like the random, like countryside drone footage came from. Wow. Wow. Oh yes, Belinda loves the photos and loves the um the one with the sun building. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. So it, it kind of shows like my style of filmmaking where it's not like vid very videography. It's more like a storytelling perspective and kind of like it focuses more on the story and being more impactful versus like, hey, here's a video, here's a photo. Mm. And like, you're even, great too. Like it just. You do so many different types of things so well. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm already planning my next reel. I already picked out the song uh, earlier this week. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also like wasn't, I just wasn't expecting you to get so emotional. I think seeing everyone outside and what I thought was like a folk fest moment with the food flipping and things like, uh, yeah. It. Yeah. One of my favorite uh, folk fest photos, actually. Pull it up. Because yeah, I definitely miss folk fest. I had all sorts of plans on things to capture for folk fest this year, mm -hmm. and that didn't work out. This was from uh, last year's folk festival. Oh yeah, the people, the closeness. <laughs> Yeah, fortunately, yeah. we really can't do much of that this year. Mm. Henry, do you mind talking a bit about what Folk Fest is for folks who are joining us, not from the community? Because I don't want to mess up a description. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> so Folk Festival is like a two and a half day uh, festival involving music, art, and food. And it's like a, well, inter international type of like, you can find any sort of food that you're looking for from any sort of background and cuisine. It's mm. an amazing experience. There's a, let's see, one, two, three. There's three musical stages mm. spread around downtown Lowell. Uh, LTC does a great job of doing a live broadcast of, mm. of the whole thing. It's like one big party where everyone just comes together from all sorts of different backgrounds and just parties pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Well said, that's it. <laughs> wow. Wow. So Henry, before we open it up um, for q and I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about, um, I know we shared this privately, but not privately, but you and I. So our whole series about highlighting artists of color and everyone has a different, I feel like our descriptions change all the time. Artists of color, BIPOC, like there's all these different ways to describe folks. Um, what's your whole, I guess, view on being described as an artist of color? What does that mean to you? I don't know, it's kind of, kind of tough. And it's funny, especially being like first generation American, because I'm the byproduct of immigrants, like directly. Yeah. So I, I, 
I always tell people I'm a photographer and filmmaker who happens to be of color. Mm, mm. Like I always try to put my work first and then kind of, I don't know, and then kind of share my story sort of thing. Like if that m- makes any sense. Mm, like you, um, yeah, I think it does. I think a lot of people, we all have these ways of describing ourselves and what we want to be first. Like I'm, I'm somebody who likes, I like black up at the top, like a capital B. Yeah. And I have some friends who don't like that. Um, and um, sometimes you also want the emphasis to be maybe more on what you do and not so much on your identity. I get, people have different viewpoints on that. I totally understand that. Hey, absolutely. Every, every single person is different. Like I still put it out there, but I always put out like what I do first. Mm. And I'm like, hey, by the way, I'm a color. I'm a first generation American from Dominican parents and speak Spanish. Hey, hey. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> but uh-huh. yeah, like you said, everyone's different. Some people put that first. Some people put it right second. It, it all comes but down I'm- to personal preference. Yeah. Luz, Hi. I know, I'm just saying, bravo, hello. Sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to say, I just feel like so good when somebody speaks Spanish. It's like, I'm very happy. Sorry. Keep going there, Henry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. I just need to say something, you know? <laughs> oh, no. I love you, Luz. Love you. <laughs> okay, sorry. Bye. <laughs> I'm sure my parents will agree uh, 100% will lose. <laughs> <laughs> um, wonderful. Okay. Um, and I think, oh, so can you just tell us for, um, can you just explain again, just all the different ways that folks like us can support you? So just go through the whole thing. <laughs> right, so apart from, so I can be hired for photography projects, video projects. I do both personal and commercials, meaning I photo, I do personal photo shoots from all sorts of different things. I'm actually shooting some senior portraits later okay. and I'm doing headshots next week. And I also do commercial work where I can be brought on for like an event, a company that needs marketing collateral or is launching a product. So I'm extremely diverse mm. in like the sort of things I do. I guess my niche is just that I approach everything from a storytelling perspective instead of just capturing a photo and an image. Mm. And, another, and another smaller portion of what I do is since I travel and like to explore, I also sell photography prints of things I capture. So I guess the way to support me is either through services or actual product. And you can find information on all of those on my website. Yes. Which is, yep www.marte.media wonderful okay so i'm gonna um open it up to any questions that we may have from participants so if you want to unmute and talk to henry directly or if you want to put something in the chat feel free um we have a few more minutes if anyone has any questions You've been sharing so much knowledge, Henry. Folks are good. <laughs> They're good. <laughs> I might ask one more while people ponder, but- um, yeah, Go right ahead. Okay. So um, in the age of social media, I feel like a lot of folks, myself included, like everyone thinks they're a photographer nowadays and think that they can take photos on an iPhone and maybe sell them. Or I'm curious what you think about that in the age of social media. Um, has it negatively impacted photography and like the art of it all? It definitely has impacted it in a negative way. But at the end of the day, who is anyone to tell anybody else that the way they're creating is wrong? Mm. Like we all, we all get our start somewhere. You're right. That's good. Even like, even as an industry, it has brought it down a little bit because cameras are more accessible, but everyone's different. Like there's a market for every sort of photography and every sort of thing. Like as long as people are creating and they're enjoying what they're creating, then there's no harm to it. Mm, mm. Oh, thank you, Donna. Did you read that, Henry? That's good. (laughs) Thanks, Donna. (laughs) Um, What advice would you have for people out there who do want to pursue photography professionally? Like how did you know 
I don't know what to charge, how to schedule your time. Like what's a good client? What's a, a sucky client? <laughs> so no, no matter how long you've been doing it, you're still always figuring that out. <laughs> it, it, like speaking from, like, from experience, I feel like I'm still figuring it out and I'm, I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Mm. And I'm sure like certain things I'm doing now might change down the road. It's just a constant evolution, but definitely try to make sure like uh, that you feel like you're, you're not putting too much work on yourself where you no longer enjoy it. Mm. So make sure that you're and you're enjoying what you're doing along the way. Cause that's what's important then at the end of the day. Mm. That's beautiful. Um, does anyone have any questions? If not, we might be ready to wrap. I just want to make sure everyone gets the chance. Okay, Henry, well, our time may be coming to a close. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Henry. Thank you, everyone who um, joined us today. Oh, hi, Jim. Thank you for coming. Um, okay. We're going to give a special thanks to um, Enterprise Bank for sponsoring this series. We wrap in February, so we have more artists coming along. Also to Nyende Thurman, who's the episode sponsor. Thank you so much, Nyende. Thank you for your support. Um, please support artists like Henry, go to Marte.media, buy a print, get a headshot. You may not even need a headshot, just get one, you never know. Um, videos, photography, everything, and Henry's right here. So just to have you in our community is insane to me, insane. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. And George, thank Thanks, you for George. Your too. <laughs> you. George is actually one of my neighbors, he's an amazing painter. Oh, George, nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you too, Chris. <laughs> you too. Okay, everyone. Well, have a happy, Thanks, happy. Ray. What day of the week is it? Have a happy Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> um, and just stay tuned. We'll have more information for future episodes. If you want to learn more about the Free Soil Arts Collective, you can hit us up, freesoilarts.org. I'm Krista Brown, founder and executive director. Luz, thank you for joining us too. And awesome, Krista Brown. I love you. Henry, you thank too. you so much for being part of this community. Aww, I love Lowell. Thank you. Thank you, Luz. Love you. Yeah. I'm happy you're here too. Thank you, Krista. Thank, yeah. you, thank you, George. Yeah, thank you, Krista. You're welcome. And everyone, this will be up on um, our YouTube page in a couple of days, but it'll be on Facebook now because we're recording live. Thank you, Belinda. Yes. Okay. Have a great Saturday, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.